Okay, we're moving on to our next plate tectonics video. So what is the plate in plate tectonics? What is it that Wegener didn't understand that was crucial to understanding how plates move? What Wegener thought was that the continents moved through ocean basins, like an icebreaker moving through ice. So as you can see here, the icebreaker is this boat that moves through the ice and behind it, it leaves a big wake or a big hole in the ice and ahead of it, it might be pushing ice upward, and there was no evidence for this. And so critics did not agree that the continents had moved. And so Wagner couldn't explain how the continents moved or why they moved. And his critics said they just can't plow through ocean crust, which was true. That is not what they were doing. Moving on now to the more modern day theory of plate tectonics. The earth is broken into these large rigid plates and they contain both the continents and the ocean crust. Remember, the water on the Earth's surface is very thin and underneath it is crust, rock. So if you look, for example, at this cartoon here, we have the South American plate, and it includes the continent of South America, but it also includes the seafloor all the way out to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, this is a cartoon. We don't really have a big gaping hole out here, but the idea is Wegener didn't understand these two kinds of crust were involved in the plates. Next video, we're going to look in particular at the different kinds of plates, what they are. We're going to start naming them and thinking about how they interact. But here's a little introduction. There are seven major plates. The largest plate is the Pacific plate. We have the North American plate, the Eurasian plate, which includes Europe and Asia, the African plate, the South American plate, the Australian Indian plate, which in this particular map is unfortunately split into two, and then the Antarctic plate, which you can't really see very well on this map, but it encompasses all of the southern continent of Antarctica. We then have seven intermediate sized plates, and those are shown here with green stars. Again, we'll look at these in more detail later. Take a moment, see if you can label the major layers of Earth on a diagram like this. Okay, so we live on the crust. The crust is so thin on the scale of this diagram that I'm just gonna leave it this dark line. That's all it's gonna be. The next layer down is the mantle. Under the mantle, we have the core, and the core is divided into the outer core and the inner core. We're gonna talk a lot about these layers in the next several weeks. It's important to know which ones are solid and which ones are liquid for a number of reasons. So the crust that we live on is solid, solid rock, and the mantle is also solid. The outer core is liquid, and if you remember, it's the electrons moving in that outer core that creates our magnetic field. And then the inner core is solid. So let's take a closer look at the crust. As I've mentioned, there's two kinds of crustal rocks. There's continental crust, which is depicted in this cartoon as mountains or islands above sea level. And then there's ocean crust, which we don't really see because it's covered with ocean water. It's low. Now I know you can't draw this cartoon, this figure here. It's not necessary. At this point, we're just gonna give you some definitions. The continental crust is thicker, but it's lower in density. The ocean crust is thinner, but higher in density. And those density differences are because of the type of rocks they're made of. So what this means is that if we looked at a picture in cross section, the continental crust, which is thicker, kind of floats a little higher on the underlying material. And the ocean crust, which is shown here, is thinner, but floats lower. So the ocean water tends to be on top of the ocean crust. Okay, so now we're gonna draw. And you might wanna get out some colored pencils or pens because we're gonna draw quite a few things. So I want you to start with just a line that looks like this. It's gonna be a cross section and a second line like this. And we're gonna label ocean crust and continental crust. So this again is a cross section through the earth. We're looking at a side view. And just to emphasize, Here's some ocean water and a little fish, or maybe a big whale, I'm not sure. So this is the crust. And what's below the crust that we just drew? The mantle. But we're gonna to start to separate the mantle now into different parts. And we're gonna start with a layer closest to the top of the mantle called the uppermost mantle. And it's about 100 kilometers from Earth's surface to the base of this particular layer. So the crust has a characteristic of being brittle. And what that means is it can break. Just like if you drop a dinner plate and it shatters, it breaks, it's brittle. 
And that's what happens when we have earthquakes. Faults occur and rocks break. And the uppermost mantle is also brittle. So these two layers together are actually called the lithosphere. Litho means rock. And so together, these parts of the upper part of the earth are the plate in plate tectonics. The asthenosphere, which goes down to about 660 kilometers from the surface, is the next part of the mantle under the uppermost mantle. And this is not brittle. This area is ductile. It's still a solid, like I said earlier, but it flows. It's capable of flow. And in fact, we have mantle convection down in this area. And it's believed that this mantle convection might actually push the overlying lithospheric plates around. So this is something that Wegener didn't understand. He didn't realize that ocean crust and continental crust might merge together and move together as one giant plate. So the lithospheric plates float essentially on the asthenosphere and that's what's shown in this diagram again. I've just reproduced it. We've got the lithosphere here represented by crust in the light color for continental crust, this gray color for ocean crust, and then this speckled looking brown is the uppermost mantle. And that is the plate. Now we have some other things going on that we're going to get to in our next video. The lithosphere is the plate and plate tectonics, and the asthenosphere is the underlying weak ductile layer in the upper mantle. Some of the plates on Earth are completely oceanic. So, for example, the Pacific plate is all ocean. Other plates have both ocean and continental crust in them, or ocean and continental lithosphere, if you want. So here's the Indian Australian plate. We've got the continent of Australia. We've got India. And then we've got lots of ocean crust as well. So there's quite a variation in types of plates. But the key is, Wegener didn't realize that the plates were more than just what we see as the continents. Coming up next, the three types of plate boundaries.